Yo. So a client of mine recently asked me to build her a sliding door for her master bedroom. And she wanted it to be like an old school barn style door. And she wanted me to use legit reclaimed wood, which is awesome. That's what I do, right? But I've never built a door like that. And normally when I get asked to build something that maybe I haven't done before, I'll try and look on the internet or see if there's any videos on YouTube of other people building this just to uh, potentially identify maybe something I'm not thinking about or something that I haven't taken into consideration or maybe something that I should really pay special attention to. But when I looked on YouTube, I didn't see a whole lot of videos on building a sliding door using reclaimed materials, which kind of surprised me because there's a lot of people that have these doors. So I figured, you know what, I've got to build the door regardless and it's probably not rocket surgery, right? I mean, cut a few boards, glue them together, you got a door. So I wasn't too concerned about the, uh, how, how challenging the build was going to be, but I figured since there doesn't seem to be that many videos on this subject on YouTube, I might as well go ahead and film the build and put it on YouTube. So that's what I did. I built this door and now you're watching the video. So thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoy. See ya. If you're gonna build something out of reclaimed wood, you need to get some reclaimed wood, right? So over this past weekend, I drove out to, uh, well, the middle of nowhere, and I picked up this chunk of barn wood, which came uh, from a barn built in Warrington, Missouri, sometime in the 1920s. It's all oak. It was siding. Most of it was siding. So you'll see here in a second. Uh, one side of the lumber is pretty, pretty gray. The other side is brown and then I got a handful of boards that must have been from stalls or something on the interior of the barn. They're pretty fresh tan color. First thing I always do when I start a project like this is just cut off the garbage. There's no sense running things through the, the planer or the joiner or the table saw uh, if you don't need to. So I knew I needed to end up with an 85 inch board. The door is 85 inches tall. So all the rotten split stuff you see me cutting off, I'm a big fan of getting rid of that right off the bat. This step I probably should have waited to do until later. And here I'm just using a jig, um, clearly, I don't get too hung up on how pretty my jigs are. <laughs> as long as they do what I want them to do, I don't worry about style points on the jigs. But uh, I, I cut off the rough edge and then went over to the planer to do a couple things. Number one, I want to get these boards relatively flat, although I'm not worried about perfectly flat. And number two, I just want to scrape off the high spots enough to kind of bring out and accentuate the saw blade marks. Once the boards are flat, I can go back to the table saw and clean up whatever rough edges are left and uh, get those nice and square. Because I will glue these together eventually. And the more square and straight those edges and cuts are, the, the easier the glue up is. Here I think I forgot to turn the uh, shot back on. I'm actually pretty confident uh, as evidenced by the dust clouds, I did turn the shop back on. So I've got the main boards for the door done at this point. Here I'm working on the top and bottom horizontal piece. Those are going to be 36 inches wide. And again, pretty comparable process. Cut them to length, get them flat, make them look pretty. After I cut the top and bottom horizontal pieces to about five inches wide, I want to say they are, 
I had to cut a little channel or a rabbit in the bottom piece which will accommodate the door guide. If you've ever seen these hardware kits for these sliding doors, they generally come with something you attach to the floor to keep the door in line. Here I'm just using a block plane to, uh-oh. Uh <laughs> I don't get too hung up on splinters, they don't bother me too much, but man, when they're in the palm of your hand, that's, that's bad news. So, a little self-surgery and I'm back in business. But I'm just using the block plane to kind of round over the edges on all these boards and I think that's one of the things that made this door uh, turn out as, as good as I think it did. Those rounded edges really sort of accentuate each individual board when they're all put together and it makes any little imperfection where one board sits a little proud of its neighbor uh, really not noticeable at all. And it kind of adds to that that worn, sort of authentic -y look that I'm shooting for. And here I'm just sanding everything, cleaning up those edges mostly. I sanded this thing a lot, probably more than I needed to. Here's the glue up. This was kind of a nerve-wracking deal. I, I probably walked in circles around the shop for like 15 minutes before finally committing to actually doing this. So I gotta put on just the right amount of glue. I gotta get all the boards lined up, get all the edges even, get the top and bottom horizontals put on, shoot some nails. I'm using an inch and a half nail because that's what I had. The wood's only an inch and a half thick, so I've gotta shoot them at angles. Otherwise, I'll come be bopping out the backside, and that's no good. There was a lot of stuff going on here. Definitely a lot of stuff. But it went well. They usually do. But man, it, it always feels like you're never moving fast enough. Let the glue dry 15, 20 minutes. It kind of forms like little glue curds. You can come back with a, a knife or a chisel and, and kind of scrape them out. Sometimes that's an easier way to clean up the glue than to try and get it while it's all wet and gooey. This is the back side of the door, which I thought was super ugly when I built it. I was actually kind of nervous about it, but I'm just going over everything with the number four bench plane, just hitting the high spots. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Now see, there's the front side. That's the, that's the side I got paid for. <laughs> that's the good looking side. But I'm doing the same thing, just using that plane, knocking down the high spots. I get asked about using the planes all the time, but you know, five minutes to kind of spot, address any imperfections, there, there's no better tool for it. I'm trying to clean out those, those little rounded edges with the sandpaper, more sanding. Like I said, I've sanded this thing a lot, but you know, sometimes you only get one chance to do it when it's relatively easy and convenient, so you may as well take advantage. Here's my, my go-to polyurethane, it's water-based. This door, two coats front and back, took almost a half gallon, which is a lot of polyurethane to put on something. And once I did the first coat, I put the diagonal brace on and I did that so I could get poly on the door that would be underneath that brace as well as, and you'll see it in a second, poly on the underside of that brace. So make a couple cuts, make sure it fits right, throw some poly on the back. I'm pretty sure that glue is not going to do any good, but it's the thought that counts sometimes, right? <laughs> And then I attach this the same way I attach those top and bottom horizontals. I'm shooting 16 gauge, inch and a half finished nails. I tried not to shoot too many nails, so I think I only shot like one nail per board per side of the door. Again, there's the back side, man. That's, it did not look good. But the funny thing is when I put poly on it, the whole thing changed. It all kind of turned into a couple different uniform colors. 
kind of the fresh wood and then the black saw blade marks. Again, more sanding. Everybody's favorite. That's 220 grit that I'm using for anybody that's curious. I get asked that a lot. 220. 220 will do everything you want it to do, provided you've done everything else the way you should have. This is coat number two of the polyurethane. Goes on a lot quicker than that first coat. And then the last step, I take that paper there. That's like, uh, that's stuff painters use when they're masking areas. It's like a million grit sandpaper is what it amounts to. And I just give everything a quick wipe down. It kind of knocks off the shine. It's kind of like using steel wool, except you don't get a bunch of steel wool fibers all stuck and everything. But it's done. I think it turned out really cool. Uh, it seems like there's just the right amount of fresh wood showing as well as the old saw blade marks, the nail holes, the imperfections, kind of the, the story and history of this lumber. It was a fun project. Hope I get to do another one pretty soon. And I hope you all enjoyed the video.